Yesterday's events in Turkana badly exposed Ruto's government as being very intolerant. And that is so because Ruto and his team have been moving freely across the country, campaigning for 2027 without any person or anybody interfering with them. In fact, just some few days ago, Ruto was in Nyanza, where he was warmly welcomed. Upon leaving Nyanza, he is instructing his team in Turukana to block Raila Odinga from addressing Turukana residents. That's political intolerance. And in our yesterday night's video, we did a detailed analysis on exactly what happened in Turukana. In this video, I want us to dig deeper for Kenyans to understand the high octane politics being played by Ruto and his team. Before we do that, if you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's proceed. Yes. What's happening here, ladies and gentlemen? Let me start by saying this. If you look on how William Ruto started his politics in the early 90s, YK92, if you look at William Ruto in the early 90s, and Ruto in 2023, the only thing that has changed is the title. In 2023 is the president, but the character is still the same. A propagandist, tribalist, a chaotic man, very divisive. And that's the truth, ladies. And gentlemen, Kenyans should understand that very, very well. Secondly, as Emeo leaders and their supporters should not waste a lot of time and energy fighting regarding Ashagwa. The biggest enemy is William Ruto himself. He's the biggest enemy to Azimio leaders and to Azimio supporters. Regarding Ashagwa, is just but a barking dog. Kenyan should not waste time on regarding Ashagwa. Ruto is the problem. Thirdly, if you look at William Ruto, the way he plays his politics, anytime he is under siege or anytime he feels the ground is becoming very hostile to him and to his government, he always reaches out very cleverly to Azimio. And he has been succeeding on that front in that he makes some of the new supporters see him as not being the problem. And I'm saying that because before William Ruto went to Nyanza, the ground was very hostile. Upon landing in Nyanza, some of the new supporters started saying that, you know, Ruto is a good man. He plans on maybe mending fences with Ray Udinga. He hates regarding Ashagwa. As much as there might be a split between Ruto and regarding Ashagwa, Ruto is not interested in the opposition areas. He is not interested in mending fences with the opposition. He is just trying to play his politics of divide and rule. If he's in Nyanza, he brands regarding the mountain people as primitive. 
if he's on the mountain, he brands Nyanza and as new supporters as primitive. So he's just playing his usual divisive politics, divide and rule. And that's why I maintain he's still the same root home of the 90s, a very divisive man, politics of divide and rule. As immune supporters should be very wise on this. Ruto is their biggest enemy. And they should not lose focus. Something also coming out very clearly, which as immune, which as immune supporters should actually know, as immune should not be taking sides in the ongoing fights in Kenya Kwanzaa. Azimio should not sympathize with any side, be it regarding the Shagwa side or Ruto side. All these two sides are enemies to progress. Azimio supporters and their leaders should allow these two sides to fight them themselves. Let them kill themselves. Azimio should not sympathize with any of them and that's very important because anytime maybe Ruto is under siege from Rigadi he always pretends that now he wants to support maybe Raila Odinga to support Azimio to support Musale Modavadi all those are just political maneuvers and propaganda Azimio should be very wise on that. Something also coming out very clearly from what happened in Turkana, Ruto is adopting a new strategy. And this new strategy, Ruto wants to use older leaders and even as new leaders who, who joined him, together with the help of the police, in making sure they stiff on the opposition. And already we have seen that in Narok, where Raila Odinga was not even allowed to access Narok town. He was blocked. They had to plead to be allowed to enter Narok town. So you are seeing they are being intimidated so that they cannot actually say the truth. And that's something that also happened in Turukana. A member of parliament, MCS, abusing Raila Odinga in broad daylight. And then they go ahead to stop the function with the help of the police. It appears that the new strategy Ruto is now adopting. Azimio should be ready to deal with that. And this is why I strongly believe that things like bipartisan talks... Azimio should abandon those talks. Mm. In fact, the talks will come up, or rather there is nothing beneficial to Azimio or even to Kenyans that will come from those talks. Those are just William Ruto's clever gimmicks of maybe even extending his term as Kenya's president. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. If you want to support our forum, contact me through that number below. Or feel free to channel any kind of a support to that number. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.